and welcome to uh, my zoo tour of Alphabet Zoo. So this is just, I wanted to just sort of uh, make a quick video just to sort of display kind of my zoo and sort of showcase everything that I've done so far because I've been working on this for a couple of weeks now and it's one of the biggest projects that I've sort of been working on. Um, basically the whole premise of this is, is that there's going to be every single animal in the game in the zoo. Um, so going sort of in like an alphabetical order of sorts. Um, just pause this a second. Yeah, so um, I thought I'd just also talk about like things that I sort of do when I build my zoos and just again just a general sort of zoo tour and sort of thoughts on where we're going to be going next. So this is my zoo entrance. Um, it's a bit simple. I need to do a bit more detail on the signs and things over there. But anyway, so when I start a zoo, I usually get the full loan out. Um, if I get the full loan out, that means that I can then use, like, I think it's like 150,000 you have then to spend or something like that. Um, that you can then spend sort of investing in like the startup of your zoo, which is how you get like, um, how you're able to sort of create zoo entrances like this from the very start. Um, obviously I have quite a lot of, uh, zoos in my franchise anyway. So, um, as time goes on, obviously you research the, me the mechanic stuff and the vet stuff, so you can actually make your game a lot easier. So, um, yeah, I'm sure a lot, of, a lot of people playing that already know that though. Um, anyway, so this is the entrance to Alphabet Zoo. Now, um, I'm just going to talk you through all the enclosures I've got so far, what it looks like so far, and where I'll probably be going with this. So, over here... At the start of the zoo, if you go to the zoopedia, obviously the first thing you get is the aardvark. So, no surprise there that the first animal in this uh, zoo is the aardvark. Now, I've been going it based on the zoopedia rather than just general alphabetical order, because obviously I would be putting different things in different orders if I was doing it that way. So, this is purely zoopedia order. Um, I've been a little bit lenient with a couple of animals, but so far this is where we're at. Um, so yeah, so this is the aardvark enclosure, and they have like this nice little indoor area over here that attaches to the zoo entrance and obviously they can go in there they're quite shy animals anyway so they can get away from the people and the people can't see through that glass so it's really quite useful um yeah so i one of the things i do do is i, I sort of tend to build like these like sort of communal staff areas and then copy and paste them throughout my zoo so i have enough resources for my staff members like easily accessible throughout my zoos um, so this is the one I've done for this zoo and we have like a little hammock over here and again I think in some of the other ones I've removed like the trade center the workshop and things like that and replaced them with staff rooms so they've actually got enough staff rooms for the staff at this zoo um, so um, yeah and then we go over here and there's our little food court that sort of fits in with the theme of the entrance and they, again I need to go to a bit more detail with some of the signs it's still a work in progress at zoo anyway so the most recent build that I've been sort of planning I guess with the zoo um has been the train station which is currently here and I've just been sort of working on that now um and sort of working to hide some of these pillars and I'm going to probably build like a maybe a castle or something themed um platform here because that would look kind of cool um but we'll see how that goes in a bit so yeah this is sort of the main entrance the sort of main plaza way got a nice little bit of greenery here um and again, the, the Alphabet Zoo sign, which I always like having a nice big entrance sign near the entrance and I've got a little path and keeper gates and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so the A section is effectively this sort of area here that we're going to go look at now. And we have obviously our African buffalo. Um, originally with this game, I was going to keep it very, very simple. I didn't want to go into too much detail with the enclosures, but as time has gone on, I've got more and more invested into this zoo and the de and I've gone like more and more into detail with this. So, um, yeah, this is our African buffalo. They're all just chilling happily here. They're probably going to have to sell a few of them soon because, I mean, there is a lot for this very kind of small space. And again, I was aiming for simple enclosures with like one or two animals in it. I wasn't planning on having them like mass reproducing um this game mode is on slow reproducing anyway so it's like on like uh, five times reproduction speed so they're going to take forever and then we have our Ald aldabra tortoises over here um i did only have three but now i think i have a thousand because they like to breed and i forgot to put them on contraception hooray so 
yeah, we've got all these all these little baby tortoises, and because it's on slow aging, they are taking forever to age up to 26 years old, which is when they become um, adults, and my god, I can't wait for that to happen, just because it's just taking forever. So yeah, the guests can walk through this habitat. I've got these little signs that are kind of uniform throughout the zoo. I wanted to keep some consistency with some things like that, and I just think it this sign that I could have created look kind of cute so I've been using it throughout and again it just makes it easier so when I'm building the enclosures I can just quickly stick that in there so over here we have the elephant house now this was attempt my attempt at a first dome um from a while ago I probably would not build it like that now um but again when I started building the zoo the aim was just to make it like quite simple and straightforward so um I thought oh, I'll just use what I've already got but anyway, so there's only enough room for sort of two elephants and a baby elephant in here. Um, again, it was only supposed to be a small zoo. I was basically doing bare minimum requirements. Um, I like, um, whenever it comes to my elephant houses, I always like to make sure that they have like this kind of semi-circle shape going on where the guests can stand over here and watch the elephants and the elephants can come in and then just go out. Um, I know it's not entirely realistic, but there are there is a zoo that I have been to called Noah's Ark Zoo Farm that you can get very very close to the elephants like this sort of distance to the elephants and obviously the the fence there behind is a lot more like robust and like elephant proof rather than this one. Um, but yeah, so um, that's sort of what this was based off. Now uh, Noah's Ark Zoo Farm is a bit of a weird one. Um, I'm from the UK, so most of the zoos I'll be talking about that I get inspiration from are in, based in the UK. I have been to a few abroad, but again, um, just for uh, argument's sake, that's where I'm sort of basing a lot of my zoos off because that's where I live. So um, yeah, so Noah's Ark Zoo Farm is a weird one. They are heavily religious, but are also tr doing conservation and science kind of promotion at the same time it's a a really weird one you'll go around the zoo and there won't be any signs really about conservation but then when you actually go on their website and actually talk to the keepers and listen to the talks they are doing a lot of conservation it's just they are like um promoted by like a religious organization but anyway um the interesting thing about that zoo is that they have the largest african elephant enclosure in all of europe um i think they managed to do this because it was basically some guy's farm and it's all quite flat land, so he just essentially built um, built a zoo on his farmland, and I think he, he slowly over time got moved from sheep and cows to like zebras and giraffes, and now they have this amazing elephant enclosure that's massive, and this is kind of what this was based off. It's like just very, very flat, but very, very big and spacious. Um, they only have three African elephants there, but it's quite interesting really because... Um, Often with Af with like elephant breeding programs, you have one male per like five or six females in a herd. Um, his zoo doesn't really focus on the breeding side of that. He has just literally got storage for these male elephants that can't really go anywhere. That haven't got any sort of place for them to go. So they've only got three male elephants there, if I recall. But it's like, well, um, where else would they go? They can't. There's no breeding programs open for them at the moment, and they sort of it's just sort of like a holding pen, really where until they can move on to different breeding programs which is an interesting aspect that you don't really think about really um with zoos often you think about our oh, breeding programs um you know it's great they're getting the population up for conservation but then it's like well hang on a minute if some species as you see in the game only need one or two males then like where are the rest of these male animals going um because obviously you know yeah, probably about statistically 50% of them are going to be male um 50% of the babies are going to be female so yeah it was really cool um anyway so that's sort of our african elephant enclosure that's sort of what it's based off and then over here we have our american bison um they've got a nice little puddle over here to roll around in the mud again i was keeping it very very simple and to be honest a lot of these animals are sort of plains animals anyway um so they don't really need too much vegetation um Probably have to sell us off some of these off at some point too because it's getting a bit like crowded in here. Um, again, just sort of keeping the bare minimum requirements just so that it can, it, you know, just to maximize on space. Um, as time again, I was just making a lot of emphasis on these enclosures, just making sure that the fences were hidden by vegetation. I like, I do really quite like the simple fence look with the electric fence. Um, but uh, as you can see, sort of over on this enclosure, on the Arctic Wolf enclosure, that I have 
sort of gone into a bit more detail with the fencing as time's gone on. Um, so yeah, so over here we have our African wild dogs, which I think all these guys are elders now anyway and are not breeding anymore. Yeah, pretty much. And then on this side we have our Arctic wolves, which I'm currently trying to get a, a decent population up to hit in this uh, group. Um, to be able to start a, a breeding zoo. Um, wolves, obviously, you can take the babies out of the enclosure and put them in the trade centre at one year old, and then the, the adults will reproduce because they're interbreeding um, months is only a year. So that's sort of what I've been doing here. So there, there were at one point, was at one point, like um, quite a few babies. There are still quite a few babies. So we've got four babies in here with the same parents. But again, the adults are sort of all getting old now. Um, so they probably won't be having too many more. Um, and I'm hoping to sort of start, use this as the, the seed base for breeding um, gold rated Arctic wolves because there doesn't seem too many on the market. So, um, yeah, anyway, so yeah, that this is uh, the Arctic wolf and African wild dog enclosure. Um, I kind of like the contrast because obviously I've built on a te European temperate zoo um, biome. So um, when it snows, this area stays very clean and grassy and then this looks very densely forested and snowy and I just like the contrast um I usually build my um canine enclosures very similar to this where it's kind of lower down with some hills and this kind of bridge thing going over so um you'll probably see that in quite a few of my zoos um <laughs> that I'll show you um just I just I'm a sucker for building things the same way and particularly with these I nearly always have African wild dogs in any of my zoos so um I like to try and I'm trying to vary up a bit in the future, but I, I do like to build things kind of the same way. So yeah, over here we have another staff centre. As I said, I just sort of copied and pasted these and then changed some of the insides and then just made some of the buildings like a, the appropriate size for staff rooms and things. Um, so just some slight tweaks here and there. Just again, if you go to zoos, you're going to get some sort of consistency with the buildings. I mean, Chester Zoo has a lot of quite um, old classical buildings and it's quite cool when you go to Chester Zoo. Um, where the lion enclosure is, you can see the scratches on the walls where the lions are like digging their claws in and dragging them down the walls. Um, so, um, again, you sort of, they have these very classical buildings and their staff buildings are, um, at one point were all quite similar. They've done a lot of work to the zoo now, but I can remember when I was a kid and we, before they had um, the TV program, before it got like loads of people were going there um, to the extent they are now. I mean, those people always went to Chester Zoo, but back then it was always a bit quieter and the enclosures weren't as grand as they are now um but i always remembered looking out for the uh the lion scratches on the walls because i always thought that was really cool um because they used to sharpen their claws basically on the brick wall um yeah so anyway that's kind of what this is based off and then over here we have our camel enclosure again sort of based off chester zoo in the sense that there's like this bridge you can go over there's like a cycle lane that goes all the way through chester zoo and there's this little bridge that you can go over and from that bridge you can look over and see the camel so that's kind of what i was going for here i guess um again it's all very very loose and i don't really tend to do things too realistic i'm just sort of letting this zoo grow organically i'm hoping in the future i'll get good enough to actually start taking into consideration more realistic designs but for now i'm just focused on my um guests getting the best view of the animals they can so got the battery and camels over here so this is the start of section b um and then over here we have our bengal tiger so um we have this little tiger tiger house thing going on um and then this sort of design kind of reminded me of dudley zoo a bit which is a zoo in birmingham um they have, uh, I think it's Sumatran tigers there. They have uh, two Sumatran tigers and they have this, You, it's very, it's just a sheltered window that you go through. Obviously, I, need, I didn't put any glass in this because I didn't like how the glass looked. Um, so obviously the tigers could just leap over if they wanted to, I suppose. But um, this is a game. We're not too focused on realism at the moment. Um, but they have like this just little viewing area that's got like the bamboo wood around it and you can see the tigers and more often than not on a rainy day, they'll be in this like shelter it's not like a proper building it's just like a little sheltered area and it's cool to see them um but yeah so this is the, t the tiger hut and um again the fence isn't too realistic they were saying that when i went to noah's Ark zoo farm they did have fences very similar to this although there was a barrier in the way that meant um that meant you couldn't like just lean over and stick your hand in the enclosure but you could get pretty close so i don't think it's too unrealistic um 
but yeah anyway so um this enclosure is again i've sort of built this zoo on different tier levels so you've got um as as you go up through the different letters of the alphabet in this section anyway it's the um terrain gets higher and higher and it's like built on different levels so this enclosure um is built on the actual cliff face and they can't get up most of it if they want to climb up to this section here they actually have to climb up this and then go across this platform which is why i built that basically um and then over here obviously this isn't quite realistic but um and sort of again this was very reminiscent of sort of uh dudley zoo where you you can look over they've got a very traditional 60s enclosure there um and you can look over into like almost like an arena kind of style um for the tigers and they have this climbing platform that actually puts them on the same eye level as you are so that's kind of what i was going for with this again the tigers can sit here and realistically i suppose they would be able to jump over um but um and again most of these tend to have like anti-climb fence probably along here with like electric fence that kind of you know diagonal electric fence they have going on um maybe if i do this something like this again i'll try um try doing that and see what it looks like um but yeah so that's that's the bengal tiger enclosure um they're all really happy these tigers have actually come from my breeding zoo uh the family um i have a a, a big cat breeding zoo that it makes me most of my conservation credits i'll make a video about that a little bit later on um so yeah so that's the bengal tigers and then over here we have the tapirs the birds tapirs and um i think they spend seem to spend most of their time under this rock yeah this is a little rock shelter down here and again this was built on the cliff face so um it was a bit challenging trying to get it so they could go to all the different areas took a little bit of terraforming but it sort of worked and they've got a nice big pool to swim in and um i guess you can view them from up here in between these jungle room buildings or they can come out here and walk on this little platform there and then we have a little uh, South American themed eatery over here where they can just, you know, uh, sit up here and take a bit of time to eat their food and look at the uh, tapirs. And I guess the battering camels and the rest of the zoo from up there. Um, yeah, so I spent a bit of time just hiding. I'm trying to, with this zoo, one of the things I'm trying to focus on is actually hiding, like, the pillars and things um, with like just fencing or rocks and just trying to make it look a bit more natural because it looks more natural than having like the walkway with nothing on it like again i think of like chester zoo they have that amazing walkway over the cheetahs um and even like the wild place project in bristol if you go there they have um they're trying to basically make it so that you've got um european brown bears and wolves living together i haven't actually been since they had the wolves but we went to see the bears and they were adorable but they've got like this walkway and again the walkway isn't just like you can go underneath it's all very segmented off it's used to divide the enclosures up um so which is what i was sort of trying to do a lot more um and then yeah this is um the bornean orangutans over here so i made this dome I, I one of the things i do for building structures is that i build them in sandbox mode and then just copy and paste them over um because obviously I've, I've got everything unlocked in franchise mode um pretty much um i'm close to getting the zoopedia done as well which i'm really excited when I get that achievement, hopefully that achievement is working because apparently it wasn't at one point. Um, but yeah, so this is my um, orangutan dome. Again, this was sort of based off zoos that I've seen. Well, as I said, I'm not big on realism. I like to try and make my enclosures somewhat realistic. Um, but yeah, and it, again, this was sort of inspired by two zoos, Chester Zoo and Dudley Zoo in Birmingham. Um, yeah, so you go in here and they've got this massive climbing frame inside. Um, which again, both, well, Dudley Zoo in particular has this wooden beams and like ropes and a climbing frame inside. And then Chester Zoo sort of has this kind of enclosed area, but they have like more mesh and they put food on the top of the mesh and the animals climb up and like eat, um, eat the food off the mesh. So it's really cool to see and it keeps their animals active and healthy and um it's just really cool to see when you go there um obviously this is not entirely realistic with this fence stuff going on but i didn't like how the glass looked so i just used a shop window and something different with that instead um but yeah so um and then as i said dudley zoo have that climbing frame inside but also we dudley zoo just a quick note while i'm here as well is 
they are actually raising money to rebuild their orangutan enclosure because it's the zoo itself is based off very like 1960s architecture and they used to have a polar bear back in the day at that zoo and like obviously you know as time's going on um they're replacing animals um that maybe wouldn't suit those exhibits with ones that are more suitable so i think they had a spectacle bear who was like 20 or something she was really old and she just died of natural causes but she'd been in captivity all her life she'd been at that zoo all her life that was all she knew um but when she passed they replaced her enclosure with um arctic foxes because it was just more suitable for the arctic foxes and they were really adorable to go see um and so it's just that sort of downsizing um which um they're trying to kind of do i think so they're trying to rebuild this their orangutan enclosure so the orangutans have got more space than they have um and so that it's just a bit more suitable for them than building on this old 1960s architecture um and then they'll use that for probably something else for something smaller some probably smaller monkeys or something but um yeah so that's my orangutan enclosure um again i sort of did the hardscape i do i always do about the climby bits first and then put the trees in the softscape which is what i call it um got the train tracks which i need to just sort out some of the bricks so they're not quite clipping so much uh, but the train track runs across the lot the um outside of their enclosure here and then this next station's over here um but yeah so then we have the black wildebeest and the bongo enclosure so these guys are just chilling um they've got a nice little bit of a plains habitat here um that again the guests can look over um i was trying to vary up again with the fences i was using just electric but then i didn't really like how it looked so i, I used some of the logs and things and again just trying to experiment a bit more um and then in here we have their sort of shared indoor outdoor enclosure so um this is based off the okapi enclosure at chester zoo um so i think they must split the male and female okapis up at different times of the year um they literally just have like logs like this that help separate it up and some plants and stuff which is what i was kind of going on um so i based it off by having like the black wildebeest coming into this section and then the bongos coming into this area i have like too many bongos i need to go sort them out they keep breeding and i've had some issues with the game where it like didn't save properly but it saved the animals so i had the baby animals in my trade center and then the animals in game were still pregnant and st then gave birth to more animals and i was just like i've had like too many happened with the ostriches as well i had like i think 10 or 10 baby ostriches at one point um that were just in my trade center then 10 that were born so i had like 20 baby ostriches and i've just been waiting for them to grow up um so yeah so the bongos again they have if you go in their copy enclosure at chester zoo they have this very viney kind of little window things with like the path goes there there's a fence in the way and there's nothing sort of the okapis can and have done i have seen it happen before where someone's reached their hand out and the okapis have like literally licked their hands and come over and, and sniffed them um like they, they haven't got glass or anything in the way that's just how it was um and so that's kind of what this was sort of based off was the okapi enclosure because i love okapis and i can't wait to build their enclosure later on when i get to o but for now uh this will have to do um I, you do usually in other zoos have like a an enclosure that's mixed okapi and bongos because they, they do go well together um but yeah this is the out, outdoor area this is one way glass and then they've just got a little pool and just the the trees and that going on to that sort of ledge so guests can look down over into here um i need to cover this up a bit better as well again this is still a work in progress i'm sure at some point i will neaten everything up but at the moment it's just it's a balancing act between managing the zoo and making sure everything doesn't break and um actually building so next thing we have is the spider house which has the brazilian wandering spider uh this actual building is on steam if anybody wants it um i'll put a link down in the description and we come into here and yeah we have the brazilian salmon pink tarantula and the brazilian wandering spider um that are in here again i think they've got too many babies i need to sort it all out um so yeah and that's just the sort of like a, little, a sort of semi-classical themed spider house going on that sort of goes into the bonobo enclosure so um yeah one of the things that i noticed at the zoos is you often have these little walkways and then you have like the main path so you can go and view the animals from a different walkway and not stand in the middle of the main path um 
that's sort of what I was aiming for here. And again, I've been trying to cover up the platforms with wood to try and make them look a little bit more realistic and a lot nicer. So yeah, and again, they've got a little treehouse thing up here, massive climbing frame for them to go over. They've got a little moat because again, that's a very typical way of keeping monkeys inside an enclosure is using moats. Um, and then they can climb on onto this platform here and they can climb all the way up here. And then we get to their bonobo house, which again, it was sort of based off Chester Zoo. That was sort of what I was aiming for. They have this wonderful circular enclosure at uh, Chester Zoo for their chimpanzees. They're in their primate house and basically that's what this was based off. So um, they go in and they've got this amazing climbing frame and that's sort of what I was aiming for. So we have this climbing frame over here that they you can see them using they're climbing along they can get on the roof around here um which is kind of what i wanted them to do i wanted them to be able to climb onto this area up here and be able to run around um and yeah so this is this building is on steam granted it probably needs some tweaking to make it work um since the update the monkeys can clip through this roofing and escape so i had to if we go here you can see the rocks that are sort of coming through i use just the south american rubble just to help fill that in so they can't climb over it um but yeah then we've got uh gulpy energy and i think donuts on the other side so that's my bonobo indoor bit this bit again i built it in sandbox and then copied and pasted it in i roughly knew what size i wanted um sometimes it's easier just to build in sandbox because i think my sandbox zoo that i do building on is all uh, aligned everything in that zoo is aligned to the grid so it's very easy to build things and get them kind of looking how you want them to though i'm still learning a lot about building um anyway now on to zone c because that's everything all the animals for zone b and this is the cheetah enclosure so we have this nice long cheetah run again this is a very this was just sort of i had a bit of space let's use it when i was planning this area i was like right how are we going to do this well we've got this a level up here and then i'm going to just use this enclosure this bit here this will make a nice cheetah area um so yeah so the cheetahs this is sort of cheetah valley i sort of based this very very loosely i might say off um sort of when i went to turkey we went to the cappadocia region and they have basically like these very very steep sided valleys and then on those valleys they have they're called fairy houses that are actually carved into the rock now i couldn't quite replicate this um, because I can't carve into the stones and I can't quite build the fairy towers quite the same but I could just put little huts and things and lots of um, just sort of African themed objects just to sort of kind of go for the look that I was I was after um, so yeah in here we have a just a, again just a little cheetah house the guests can't view into this because um, it would stress the cheetahs out basically they have just enough space when there's two of them um but when there's more of them which they when they have babies they don't have enough space unfortunately um but they do have like a little cave that goes actually runs along the back here um so they have more space than they look but they can climb up here and go use the scratching post and unfortunately it didn't quite work um this sort of viewing structure so i terraformed this and then stuck the rocks to it um and this here, they like to chill under it now, but I, it was originally all sealed off, but it just wouldn't work. It was too too little space for the cheetahs, so I had to get rid of some of it. Um, yeah, and then we have a nice little pool here. There should be a waterfall. Yes, we have a waterfall there. Um, and that's sort of that area there. So again, the, the guests can view the cheetahs from there and then we have the capuchins so we walk up through here this ruins uh, sort of themed habitat now their enclosure literally just sort of jumps off the edge of a cliff here so um they can't actually escape this somehow even though i was so sure they would be able to um they can't so that was really nice um yeah so these guys their main bit is all this climbing and stuff and now i love the ruin pieces from the south american pack it's it just looks amazing and I, so they have the prefabs and often what I do is like I cut and paste little bits from the prefabs um, just to add to my buildings because they go into a lot more detail than some of the prefabs. So like this wall here, I think is from one of the prefabs. I just chopped, chopped, chopped bits of it up and like this brick work up here, like these are all individual bricks. 
I didn't have time to do that. So I just, the devs have already done it for us. So I just use that. Um, but yeah, so this is sort of like a ruin enclosure and I wanted it to sort of be like, it was all dilapidated and just falling apart and nature had completely taken over it. And if you're a, a guest walking through here, you know, you can be looking up around you, you can be seeing the capuchins wandering around and I just, again, the capuchins were such a good addition from the uh, South American pack and they just look great. Obviously some of these guests would have to be uh, mindful of their heads because uh, they could whack their head on that, but it works somehow. Um, yeah, so this structure here was a tree house that was one of the prefabs. It's got a little shelter on it and I like using it. Um, as a shelter for the capuchins because they can climb right up onto it and it just looks really cool and again the guests can't see them so it's like perfect um social needs and being met there um and again these guys they can climb around i did have an issue with them escaping when some of the trees were like hanging out of the enclosure but um all that seems to have changed now um yeah with this i was just going for that this tree the weight of this tree is pulling this wall over um yeah so that's the capuchins and now we're onto the the upper tier for section C. So this funny structure here, I didn't really know what I was doing. I wanted to build a pangolin enclosure underneath a warthog enclosure and I've never done it before so I just sort of winged it and tried my best. Um, it's sort of, I sort of like the results. So this building here is um, built around the hole that was in the ground and, and I just made this roof out of these hexagonals, changed them different colours and then just decided to make like a little botanical garden thing on it I think I'd do this again definitely in a zoo and I would have like um just samples of all the different plants you can have just to sort of educate the guests I mean again you go to all sorts of different zoos and um I mean again just picking Chester Zoo because it's the one I can think of at the top of my head you know they advertise they have over a thousand plants and animals in their zoo um so they're show they're not just showcasing the animals they're also showcasing the plants that or in those animals habitats which is really cool um so yeah so unfortunately the warthog has this horrible lump because there's a pangolin habitat under here which i'll show you in a minute and i couldn't get it to work i didn't go deep enough with the pangolin habitat i will definitely at some point um if i'm doing something similar like this again i will make sure to go deeper but i just sort of winged it at the time i didn't really know what i was doing and not done one before so yeah and i made these umbrella things again in um sandbox mode and then just copy them pasted them in um it's just a lot easier to do it that way i find rather than actually building in your zoo i mean the yes okay i would say you know if you're building specific buildings using path paths and things and yeah for sure um build it in the zoo but if you can help it um sometimes i find just building things in sandbox mode it gives you more space to think so um it gives you more space to think and you can just like sort of plan things a bit better um so yeah this is my pangolin habitat as you can see it's underground i really don't know why i thought they would like living underground i think i was thinking of doing this for the aardvarks but then didn't and so i thought oh i'll just do it for the pangolins instead um yeah these guys are just uh happy underground in their little cave we just like to i like to pretend this area doesn't exist um so yeah so we come up into this cave um sort of up here if it's gonna let me there we go oh now we're in the roofing area yeah so that's the pangolin area they've got this nice little scenery going on it was going to be a cafe but i ran out of space so i just gave up um <laughs> i'm not a perfectionist <laughs> um but yeah so then i made this little sort of shelter out here for the guests to walk through so we have the eastern brown snake in there and you can sit here and watch the warthogs have a nap basically is, is what this is for and also see them up there but I mean that really shouldn't be there that should be flat it's just a place for the guests to get out of the rain when it rains really um like a lot of zoos in in the UK in particularly obviously with our weather have a large emphasis on sort of indoor areas as well I mean most people in the UK are happy to go out in the rain anyway but they do also have like a big focus on having indoor areas um yeah, so that's the common warthog over there. And then over here we have the common ostrich. So this is just, again, again a very simple enclosure. I didn't really want to go to too much detail on it. I did this uh, Indian brick wall. Um, and yeah, the ostrich is just chilling. I'm going to probably duplicate that at some point just to make it so it's like a few umbrellas to kind of match 
that over there just to sort of bring it all together um just built a little canopy thing for them with lots of plants on it i like doing stuff like that i like having lots of greenery i think it really helps bring out the zoos um again some of these things i've literally just built these here just to hide errors in the wall um it's something i'm getting a lot better at doing is just hiding errors in the walls and things so now we're on to the cassowary this is one of the animals that i've sort of not kept wow the train's really working so yeah basically my, my uh, guests were not coming over here because they were running out of energy even i mean they're like all of them are fed up on like caffeine anyway because the only thing they can really drink in the zoo is like gulpy energy so they're all on you know high on caffeine as it is but it still wasn't enough to get them to this part of the zoo which i can't really blame them it is quite far away i mean you can't even see the entrance from here um so yeah so this is the the, the cassowary kingdom so obviously it's southern cassowary but i put it in to see because i really wanted to build um an enclosure for one of the australian animals so i, I ignored the southern cassowary bit um so yeah we come in here which is really busy um and they've got like the vending machines which the vending machines are brilliant um and then this little building this building again is on steam i'll put a link in the description and yeah this is one of my first builds where i'm really taking a lot of attention to detail sort of in the building itself i need to sort of improve there's a lot i can improve on and but i'm getting there slowly like it's taken almost a year but i am getting there slowly um so yeah i love the australian theme buildings all this is australian theme uh, i stuck almost strictly australian theme here and i love these funky roof bits i didn't really know what i was doing with it i just decided to chuck it there because i really liked how it looked and these are like these bird nest things um are the rusty pipes and you can make a dome with them really easily because of the shape of them which i was really thankful for because i hate building circular objects in this game it's so difficult i wish they had it it was easier to do so um but yeah so that's the the indoor area for the cassowaries and we we come over here and we have like a nice little eatery i'm gonna do some rockery or something there just some nice scenery um with these i just wanted to see what the australian buildings look like so that's why it's all the australian theme um yeah so this is our cassowary enclosure again i was trying to hide these platform areas just to make them look a bit more realistic and then we have our cassowaries which are absolutely gorgeous i love them and we have a bam bam the little baby cassowary who is literally adorable and i want to eat him he is that adorable he's so cute i could just consume him um yeah that's a a, a, a phrase my family use a lot um we used to have hamsters and they used to say oh you're so cute i could eat you uh probably not the best thing to say to a hamster but anyway so now we're on to uh d so the two animals really that we have in game on the zoopedia for d are the doll sheep and the dingo now again i was super excited for the dingo because it was new and again i just love how you can keep your animals in just using like rock walls and things like with the capuchins here you can do the same with the dingoes and i just have this really steep rocky side and they can just stay in their enclosure and can't escape um so yeah i really went to town with this bit because i was so excited for the dingoes and um i made this little shelter for them um which again is on steam i love just these theme buildings like i was just playing around here really i wanted to make a shelter and i wanted to use these and i thought oh it makes like a nice flower so that was kind of where i was going with that um but i just love the gum trees the gum trees are gorgeous and it's just again all of it is just love it i love it all oh, God, give me more <laughs> let me spend my money um yeah so then that's the dingo enclosure over here and then we have the doll sheep which I was trying to make it as really interactive as possible. I wanted like a little mountain trail. And as you can see, he's this little one is jumping over here. Um, so the zookeepers can actually walk down here, come all the way up here, fill this. And then the, you'll have like a mass migration of all the, the doll sheep coming up here to eat this. Um, again, with this one and that one, I like the contrast of the, of the arid and then the snow. But I was also trying to aim for both of them to make it look like there were no barriers which i think has been quite successful actually it just sort of doesn't look like there are any real barriers in this zoo it's just rock work i mean i'll be bringing the rocks here around this bit to make it a bit more like blending in um but yeah so these guys again um i think it was prague zoo we went to where they had um they, they had mountain goats but they literally just had like a, a really sh sheer cliff face and 
the goats were just, you know, doing what goats do. I mean, they've, that's why they have clo cloven hooves. It means they can balance on um, the rock walls and stuff like that. So it was this, like, almost like a, just a cliff face, and it was, like, almost vertical. It was, like... Um, and they were just chilling and the, there was like hay at the top and they had to climb from the bottom all the way to the top and that was kind of the idea I wanted to sort of go for with this was they're mountain goats they're going to be going up and down vertical cliff faces that's what they do it's what they do best it's what their evolution has designed them to do so I wanted to have like these little cliff faces have them wandering around and I wanted the guests to be able to like look up and see them I mean that was again when we went to Prague Zoo I'm pretty sure it was Prague Zoo I've been to a few zoos in Europe and that was one of them um and they have this vertical cliff face and you are looking up at the goats and that's what I was sort of trying to replicate though not very well um obviously the animals won't go this is like as vertical as I could get it this bit here um so yeah um and these guys they'll they'll come up here and they'll, they'll walk all the way up there yeah so that's D done and then finally um I got up to F and there's only one animal really for F if you're going based off the Zoopedia, which we are, and that is the foremost and black, black bear. Um, so we have two in this enclosure. Um, and again, I'm going for a bit of an Asian theme here, um, which I think sort of contrasts quite nicely. I like how you have all these nice tropical plants and then it contrasts with sort of like the cherry trees and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they've got a little pool. I was going for a bit more structured a bit more of a structured build with like a bit of a, a bit of a plaza and they have got a cave they can go in under here which helps add space to their enclosure because again I was, it was a bit tight for space sometimes I find just digging underground and building them like a cave underground helps just to add the space and finally we're on to G which we've started G with the Galapagos tortoise which we have Raphael over here now um he is, yeah, on his own in there because it's a very, very small space. It's like the bare, bare minimum for the Galapagos tortoise. I just had this bit of space here and I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought, oh, I could make put a Galapagos tortoise in here. So he is making up for the fact that we have 12 Aldabra tortoises over there. And he's, you know, um, thing is, is like, again, you go to zoos and you see, I think, Chester Zoo, I think, Bristol Zoo, I think... I think as well there's the conservation park in Birmingham and they have very small spaces for the, the, the Galapagos tortoises it's like very just like a very small green and most of the time they're indoors anyway um so that's kind of what I was going for there I mean it's probably unfortunate with the space size of it but that's kind of the size I've seen at some zoos whether that's good or bad I I guess I mean I, I feel like the tortoises needs are being met in those zoos but anyway yeah, so that is Alphabet Zoo. That's the main tour done. Wow, it's been a while uh, while we've been, been doing this. Um, so, yeah. Um, basically, the plan is this area here where this path is sort of exposed is going to be mainly for G. So we're going to we're gonna start off with the gems box here, finishing off this mountain kind of theme. We're going to have the great flamingos, giant anteaters, grizzly bears, um, and... I think there's a few other animals again for G and we're going to have like a small reptile house probably here and yeah and we'll see how it goes and it's basically going to be so that Z or is going to be over here I might make the zebra Z just because I feel like we haven't actually got any animals for Z and that could go there but yeah there'll probably be a couple more stations in the process we're just going to be following this track really and see where we end up it's all just gonna be very organic just let creativity flow and see what happens uh, i'm not planning too much with the zoo um but yeah anyway thank you for watching and tuning in um i appreciate it and hopefully i will be creating a new video um showing you the construction of that gems box enclosure which is the next one we're working on so thanks for watching take care guys